Thank you. Uh, good morning, at least in Mexico, to all the participants, and very big thanks to organizers too for letting us uh, present the results of a project that so far uh, involves only a few individuals, few researchers from the uh, German Center of Neurodegenerative uh, Diseases, Neurodegenerative Diseases, and the Free University, both situated in the in Berlin, uh, Germany. Even though not stated in our title, the inspiration for our work comes from one of the most uh, most common causes of uh, dementia, the Alzheimer disease. As many of us already know, this uh, disease is connected with the death of neurons that will uh, lead to the shrinkage of our brains, that will lead to many problems with our speech, with motorics, with orientation and memory as well. The exact causes of of the Alzheimer's disease are known for several uh, several decades already, and we know about the disease for more than a century. But these causes are still poorly understood. So, what makes these small differences uh, between the brains ending up so huge? The causes were found in a combination of genetic, some gene, some target genes like APOE were uh, found to be pretty much uh, important for the development of the Alzheimer's disease, environmental factors or lifestyles, whether we are active or inactive in our life. However, there are two prime suspects uh, known that are on, in a cell, on a cell level, in a cell physiology, uh, start the, the, the killing of the <laughs> neurons, let's say. So those are two within the cells, we, uh, in between the cells, we have the packing up of the amyloid uh, peptide uh, plaques, and within the cells, the tau protein starts uh, preparing the tangles. In this project, we studied mostly the first one, so the amyloid beta peptide. And this peptide originates from a precursor protein, amyloid precursor protein, that is found in slash on the membrane of our neurons. It gets cut by secretases, and these small peptides are then soluble oligomeric uh, amyloid uh, beta peptide. This soluble uh, oligomers then by time starts backing up in a very insoluble plaque so first the fibrils fibrils and then the fibrils make up uh, the plaques our question therefore was uh, and the aim of the project to distinguish the first uh, stepping uh, well the first steps in the response of a cell to these two different we think different uh, types of the amyloid beta peptide outside uh, the cells itself. So our question was, what do the cells do? So whether they are panicking because they see, oh, there is an oligomeric amyloid beta peptide outside my membrane, or they take it maybe with a glass of Moscow and say to themselves, take it easy, nothing is happening, everything will be good. So to this aim, we prepared an exposure experiment on uh, cell lines, neuroblastoma cell lines. We wanted to see the quickest, the shortest uh, uh, term responses. We had uh, in total uh, four time points and we had three, let's say, treatment groups. One was the control, one was the cells that, was, that were treated with the oligomeric uh, amyloid the beta peptide. So from now on, uh, from now on, ABO. And the third one was with the uh, treatment with the fibrillar uh, amyloid beta peptide from now on ABF. We had the triplicates. We set the experiment. We had these four time points after a half an hour, one hour, six hours, and after a day post exposure. In total, there was like 36 samples. We got the cells, we extracted the, the, the RNA, we did the sequencing on aluminum machines, and then we started our bioinformatic uh, analysis. So we cleaned, the, we, we cleaned the data, we mapped them to the human reference genome, and then we counted the features that were covered by these reads. Later on, we did the, the differential expression analysis based on those counts of the features, the geo enrichment analysis, and so on. What are the overall results of our experiments? Well, for, 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 for first, there was no 
significant difference between the control samples and the samples that are in the cells treated with the oligomeric uh, amyloid beta uh, peptide. So let's just say they just didn't differ. They didn't uh, change their transcriptome at all. Uh, this may say to us that there is no actual response, no short term, no quick response to the treatment or to the oligomeric uh, oligomeric amyloid beta happening or present in the outside of the cells. However, between now the ABO and the APF, which was our question uh, after all, we see the 271 differentially expressed genes in all of those different uh, time points. None of those 200 and more genes was previously uh, reported as the plaque induced gene. So those genes are not connected with the Alzheimer disease in its late stages when the plagues are already there. So maybe something's happening here in the beginning. More from all of them, only 16 uh, differential expressed genes were found or seen in more than one time point. And for us, the most important ones or interesting ones were, were the time points of six hours and then 24 hours. What happened at six uh, hours uh, post-exposure? We had uh, 18 underexpressed genes in the ABF group. Uh, uh, only three of them were protein coding. So for only three of them, we could really say maybe this is the, the true function. And for all of them, we found the enrichment of the uh, transcription factor binding motif in the promoter region for the EHF uh, transcription factor. However, this one is actually not normally expressed in brain. It's, it is expressed but at low uh, levels. The common geoterm for uh, these three proteins and maybe some of the lung encoding RNA is or may be the lipid metabolism. At, on the contrary, so the Upregulated uh, genes were most were only 11, but mostly protein coding. Several uh, of them were transcription factors, and the non-coding ones were actually the anti-sense anti -anti RNA. So they also have a bit of a regulatory factor, uh, regulatory, yeah, factor uh, function, especially to the hops so developmental genes. We again find one binding motif uh, enriched for a specific transcription factor, this one being the sync finger 202, which is a known repressor of the APOE. This was one and still the most important gene that was, you know, connected somehow with the development or the causes of the uh, Alzheimer's disease. If you're looking at the geoterms that were uh, enriched, uh, most of them are some regulatory uh, pathways and many of them actually appear uh, regulating and methylating, so modulating the SMAD uh, regulation, regulatory pathway. What happens at one uh, day after the exposure in the uh, APF? So yeah, well, in the APF, there are 14 uh, down-regulated genes, 10 of them are protein coding, there are no, yeah, there are some motive enrichments, but for many of the transcription factors. So you cannot just say, okay, this transcription factors does something or it doesn't do anything. And again, we have the geoterm that is enriched uh, lipid metabolism, many of them with the metabolism of lipids uh, happening in uh, or within the mitochondria. Of the overexpressed genes, Again, we have mostly the protein coding ones, many T, uh, TF uh, binding motifs enriched in the promoters of all of those genes. And a common geoterm would be transcription regulation, I would say again. If I have to have a short summary of only those two uh, time points in this contrast, uh, we see that there, well, I can now name the four genes that are done regulated in the ABF at both, uh, both time points. No gene was consistently upregulated in those late time points, late time points. And we can actually say that there is a downregulation of, of a lipid metabolism within the ABF treatment, so as a reaction to the fibril uh, amyloid beta uh, present outside the cell membrane, in parallel with the upregulation of a developmental or transcription regulation within the cell. In 
addition to these four that were down regulated in two, uh, two time points, we have 12 more the differential expressions and other time point contrasts, uh, making them in total 16. Three of them were not coding, 13 were coding, and out of those 13 coding, which we see here in the network, uh, in the string network, six were connected with the methylation pathway. This string network uh, actually shows us as the, uh, the connections, the, 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 the edges, the information that we already know from the co-expression analysis uh, or the protein-protein interactions from other authors. If I have to say now everything together and summarize uh, this small project, uh, the results look promising because we see something new, something that was not before connected with the uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, none, none of those genes were popping up in the late stage amyloid, uh, uh, late stage Alzheimer disease uh, studies, uh, and we see that some of the biological functions are uh, strictly up or down regulated in our data sets. We want to make it a bigger project now. We know that these cells are neuroblastoma cells, so maybe not the normal cell lines, maybe something was different in their reactions. Uh, so bigger study, different groups, and also we now want to include the, well, lipid metabolism within our aim, so maybe go to lipidomics or actually try to see whether the inflammatory or anti-inflammatory uh, genes connected with lipid metabolisms would pop up again. The funding for the project comes from the START initiative of the Free University of Berlin. I would like to thank all of the collaborators from the German <laughs> Center of Neurodegenerative Diseases and the Free University of Berlin, and I'll be happy to answer all the questions. Thank you. I hope that was in time. Yeah, in fact, you were too ah, fast. okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for the quick you talk. You have enough time for questions. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. As many questions as needed. Uh, so I was wondering about the control group that where you didn't see any difference. How, what do you interpret out of that? Uh, so. That is a bit of a problem because for some of the researchers or from the biophysics, biochemical point of view, even those oligom oligomeric uh, amyloid beta, beta protein would be seen as toxic for the cells. So no, uh, no response either shows us that there is no a very quick response. So maybe that the cell at the beginning doesn't either perceive the, 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 the differences in its environment because this secretases always work. So there is always a bit of this oligomeric uh, uh, amyloid beta present or there we just didn't find it. So maybe it's like a long-term reaction starting with one gene to another. So like in a step-wise uh, manner, either thing is actually <laughs> possible. This is why we want to prolong it to at least 72 hours uh, reaction because we would like to have more info on that. Thanks. Thank you. We have one question from Paula. Hi, why did you choose those time windows for the exposure if you go to lipidomics conditions would be the same? Thanks. Oh, that's a very interesting question. Thank you for the question. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, initially starting, we really wanted in a, this uh, time series manner only to uh, try to find the, the shortest reaction, so the, the, the quickest reaction. So our initial idea was like, okay, up to six hours. Everything that is immediate should happen after six hours. But then, I mean, we had some money, so we said, okay, let's do another uh, time point. And for this, we showed or we chose a longer, uh, longer window. Uh, as well with that in the cell line, sometimes you see the senescence of cells or some, 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 um, you know, some um, technical problems maybe uh, uh, happening because the cells are growing for too long. If we are to go to the lipidomics, we have to ask our uh, collaborators from the uh, other institute because they're more into it. And I think if we are having more, uh, money and more time points it would be even better so not only staying in this time points 